Welcome to Syntax. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Front End Happy Hour podcast. Welcome to this week's JS Party. Live from Shipshape Studios, this is Whiskey Web and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and me, Charles William Carpenter III. That's right, Charles. We drink whiskey and talk about web development. I mean, it's all in the name. It's not that deep. This is Whiskey Web and Whatnot. Do not adjust your set. Whiskey Web and Whatnot is brought to you by Wix. We're big fans of Wix here on the show. We've had Yoev and Emmy on before on episode 98. If you're interested in more about Wix, definitely check that episode out. But I'm here today specifically to talk to you about the new Wix Studio. Digital marketers, this one's for you. I've got 30 seconds to tell you about Wix Studio, the web platform for agencies and enterprises. So here are a few things you can do in 30 seconds or less when you manage projects on Wix Studio. Work in sync with your team on one canvas. Reuse templates, widgets, and sections across sites. Create a client kit for seamless handovers and leverage best-in-class SEO defaults across all your Wix sites. Time's up, but the list keeps going. Step into Wix Studio to see more. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Whiskey Web and Whatnot. I'm your host, Charles William Carpenter III, and joining me today is my special guest co-host, Adam Ergal. Adam Ergal, I'm not the AI version of Robbie, or am I? Yeah, you're the, you're the more handsome one. Ah. Uh, all righty, so joining us today is Diego Gonzalez. And uh, Diego, for the people who don't know who you are and what you do, let them know. I am a PM working on the Edge team. And basically what I do is if there's a platform feature that's coming to progressive web apps, then it'll very likely go through me. And that pretty much goes from maybe an ask from either a developer or a partner and taking all that all the way through the standardization process, which is, you know, fun, just to put it in a way. And You're then a glutton making... for punishment is what it is, yeah, right? Well, yeah. Well, it's just time. I, I, like, we, I like the politics of yeah, it. Yeah, we like it when it takes time. We don't want things to happen quick. That would yeah. be too easy. Yeah. We'd rather have two years yeah, on might be decisions. Sloppy, I don't you know. know yeah. right. I mean, because we all know that all the partners can just, you know, keep on waiting for the feature to be ready when we think it's ready or when they need it. So Once yeah. a week, we push things one inch, and eventually yeah. it goes a mile. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of freedom units. You, can you do the conversion for our international guest? Uh, uh, that's a three One centimeters. Listener, and he doesn't I don't know. Here. Three centimeters ish. How many is centimeters is? I don't inch. know. That's what she said. Oh, Sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah. And then just trying to make sure that we get some adoption of the feature. So that's probably one of the hardest parts. That's what she said. Nice. <laughs> But wait, yeah. when I launch a POA, I always... Oh, sorry, PWA. I like yeah. to say POA, but people hate Pua. it. Uh, it sounds a little like karate or something. Like oh, Pua. I thought it was like karate. You know, I like, would Pua, like Pua, some Pua. poutine and POA. Nice. It sounds French the way you pronounce it, like POA. POA. Like very... Oh, yeah, yeah poisson. Oh, yeah. Pua. It's very refined now. Yes. Uh, Maybe this is this is what we've been missing from PWAs. Yeah. Kind of like the rebrand, yeah. Yeah. But it's not a PWA, it's a, it's a POA. It's a POA. Oh, yeah. POA. POA. Very POA. French style. It's like Vite. You not know really that tool, Vite? Are you familiar with it? It's like I a, do not know, no. Oh, it's it's kind of like a build chain tool. It's kind of like a Webpack or, I don't know. It's so, just less in your face. It reads what you wrote. And it's then Vite. A, yeah, it, Vite. Yeah, it goes well, fast. It goes fast. Yeah, so pois. But I launch my PWA and I get to specify in my manifest a question mark and I say standalone or whatever. So yeah. that's kind of how I'm tracking. How do you track? A, are we getting into the web too quick? We're doing a little we're bit. Supposed we need to a drink, drink first. A little whiskey yeah. first. I mean, we're okay. terrible hosts. We haven't even offered you a drink quite yet. So let's go into that. Uh, today, since uh, when in Rome, and, and at this point, Rome is Seattle, Washington, by the way. We're here for Microsoft Build. And uh, we're trying the Woodenville Bourbon. This one is finished in port casks. It is 90 proof, so 45% alcohol, aged five years, and then finished for another six months in those port casks. The mash bill is 72% corn, 22% rye, and 6% barley. So pretty high corn, but bourbon is like that, at least 51 or higher. It's like you're evaluating the bundle a little bit of maybe. this beverage. You know, it's like if, if we were Alex Russell... We'd be looking at the trace, going looking at the waterfall. How did we get here? I was actually thinking that that kind of sounds like a spec. Mm, yeah, nice, it oh, does. Yeah. 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 
There's nothing wrong with that. You're in the right company. Projecting onto things that are not tech. It's hard it's to tech. Trauma. Get, Trauma. It's hard to see how much I'm pouring and get this close effect. Look at this color. It's like ruby red. Yeah. Well, finished in port cast. Friends, so I'm assuming it's going to be sweet because of that. I, I mean, if you if you put it against the light, it could be Coca Cola. You know, just totally like could. But, yes. but when you kind of leave it, yeah, you know, uh, outside and all the gas just like the next morning. Yeah. 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 I under poured you, sir. By the way, I should do a better job there. Thank Feel you. Feel free to have as much or as little as you would like. Okay, so we're going to try this, do a little smell, do a little taste, talk about it. We have a highly complex rating system that is from zero to eight tentacles. Tentacles are the octopus logo for the podcast. We add a zero in there because we're pseudo engineers. We want to index base yeah. things and be so clever. So a ninth one comes to be zero is this is horrible. Please, you can throw it over your shoulder. Four, middle of the road, not bad, not great. Eight, clear the shelves. This is amazing. I will be drinking this as my spirit of choice from here on forth. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. 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 Oh, yeah. I was I was smelling first. Sorry. But you can do whatever you want. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Initial punch. Okay. So Hello. you said cola and just on the smell, because I haven't tasted it yet. I forgot about the order of operations here. These are important. I totally smell like flat cola, cola. a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. It's got a cola punch to it, like but, but big time. Is it Pepsi? Maybe almost like Coke. You know those or little root RC. beer candies? Oh, dude, yeah. Okay, the smell reminds me of those candies a little bit. That's I don't what know I mean. It's that sweeter. Something... That's got to be the port barrel. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Whoa, the scent is a little boozy, but the taste is sweet, like a mm, interesting. It's got a little punch on the finish. It sure. Well, I it thought, definitely I has a like the beginning. Dang. flat cherry cola flavor a little bit to me. So again, I'm kind of coming back to cola. I get a little bit of bitterness, like a, a citrus rind through the middle. I got and then it's got it's got some it's got some punch on the way down though. Definitely has some punch. Yeah, punches it went in and punches. Oh man, Whoa. look, I still got goosebumps. Wow, look at my hair. that They're is standing. doing something for you. Well, got... we're gonna find out if a uh, local boy likes his own juice. Ooh, yeah. That so he's dirty. <laughs> He's commenting that this is from Woodenville, which is down the street-ish. If you consider, if you looked at a really big map, it'd be Made down the street. In Washington. Yeah, it's Washington Brew. Woodenville's about an hour, hour and a half out of town. Yeah, I mean it's good. Well, I like the finishes. Why don't you? Uh, why don't you give it a rate? Cool. Okay, right off the bat, I uh, was not expecting the initial taste. It struck me. It definitely has a cola flavor to it. It's. I wouldn't call it syrupy cola though. It's got the cola notes without the syrup. And the finish was also strong, but as it's fading, I'm appreciating it more. It, the last one we had was much lighter, had a golden color. This one, the color is really pretty. I don't yeah. know, for some reason, I really like the color. Or I guess that's the port barrel as well. But the last one was so delectable. I'm going to give Nobody this Nobody knows what the last one is, by the way. The, so uh, you, you, we recorded a show before this, and you had a Japanese whiskey that was lighter. So Yeah, lighter, yeah. more golden. context. Yeah, sorry. Given that that one got a six and a half, or maybe even a it got a seven, got which a is seven. quite high, uh, I'm gonna give this one a six. This is nice, but I don't I don't feel like it's his daily driver as the last one was. Mm -hmm. He has a drinking problem, you know. I'm so sorry. And thoughts or feedback, opinion? Um. So I don't know much about whiskey. It tastes woody, so I'm guessing the Woodenville. But. Definitely strong. What I'm appreciating is that, you know, for Seattle giving us these uh, couple of days that have been a bit colder, yeah. it kind of warms my heart. My, yeah. Definitely my esophagus. So <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, warming you from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking kind of like Cuba Libre. Like, I don't know why I have this idea, you know, like just add, since we were talking about Coke, like actually add a bit of Coke and yeah. just have like a Cuba Libre. And I kind of feel that I don't have the comparison to the previous one. Cause no, you don't. And you were, we're not supposed to. We don't usually record two, two a week. So My bad. Error on context. the co-host. No, error. no, no. It's, it's just it's so compare fine. it this it's... way. is like if you don't have a lot of whiskey, so you don't have that context there, just think about it in comparison to other spirits that you might have straight up or with a little Coke. Like, whatever way you would prefer to have it or not at all. Maybe you hate it, and, like, that's totally cool, too. There's no well, wrong I with think that. this would be um, probably a five and a half, six is the type of drink that I would uh, go on on a wedding 
because the wedding needs to get started. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. There you go. I like that. This feel starts, from it. starts the party. Starts the party. Yeah. 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 So, I've actually had a, no, I know a lot about bourbons. Um, this has sweetness. I mean, it's aged in uh, brand new charred oak barrels. So, you're going to get a lot of wood in okay. that. A five year. It's good. That that's like a decent amount of time. It's almost like it legally has to be at least four years to get enough wood in it. Five years is pushing a little beyond that. Your normal like maker's mark or something like that will go six, seven years on average to get that kind of flavor profile. That's weeded. This one definitely isn't, but still has sweetness from the corn. The only thing is, is that when you start to introduce port, it really like goes. It, it kind of glosses over like what might be a more mediocre whiskey. So this one tastes good. I appreciate like some of those cola notes and everything else. And this one wasn't like super expensive by any means. I again, I think it was around fifty dollars. So I I could have it. I don't know that I would reach for it first per se because I've had some other ones that get port finished that just like that just adds another dimension to. And I think like this is that's the predominant flavor here for me. And so it makes me think like the whiskey is just okay, and this makes it better. So I'm going to give it a five. Like it's better than average. You could, ha I actually wouldn't mind it with like a little cooler. I think like if it had a couple of ice cubes or something or a big cube or something like they just like brought some, took the temperature down a little bit. I think that would also be kind of nice about it. It's kind of like you're describing that this is cheating. It's lighthouse score. It is cheating. Exact. That's a good analogy, actually. I think oh, that's exactly I, what it is. I made a good analogy. Yeah, you're learning. Holy I am bringing geez. you to the dark side. It of, is uh, happening. Alcoholism. It's, either that or you're like, okay, his nonsense is starting to make yeah, sense. Yeah, you know, if you spout enough bullshit, this is why you think I know what I'm talking about because I have a bunch of you know words that we all know that I'm assigning to flavor and taste profiles but it's all arbitrary vernacular anyway, right? Like I say cola and, and then that starts to, oh, maybe that puts something in your mind. And maybe if I had said like, you know, dried fall leaves in the smell, you might've started to pick that up. There I would is say like that element of like introducing the thought and then you start to catch inception. it. Yeah, exactly. I think the flavor is micro soft. <laughs> mm. So does that one, does that one land? Uh, no. No, that's I appreciate the okay. effort still, right. like where you're going yeah. with that. Yeah, keeping it in brand, but yeah, yeah, like we we appreciate that, our gracious hosts. But. That gets a, a two out of eight, eight tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, hey, that's better than zero. So you know you're working your way up. Okay, hot cakes time. Hot cakes, yeah, yeah. Uh, syrup or uh, powdered sugar? No. Q, but yeah, yeah. I'm wondering. Okay. See here, as a PM though, like these hot takes have to. I know hot takes. Uh, mobile Safari or desktop Safari? You're stuck in hell. Des Which door do you Dude, want? Dude, you broke them already. <laughs> uh, good. The desktop Safari. Yeah. 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 It's fair. Because it means I'm on a I'm on a desktop, which means I can install Edge. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, there you touche. go. Touche. And Edge wow. was your first pick. It's like they pay your rent or something. You know, it's uh, maybe, yeah. yeah. Who, yeah. Knows? Who knows? I haven't seen the Edge PWA install banner before. Is it better or worse than Chrome's? The Edge PWA banner. Wow, it's uh. Sorry, I went deep right away. I was. Yeah, like... no, no, it's 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 all right. You know, I like the I like the experience of how Chrome has implemented the adding screenshots and a bit more of information. I, in that case, you know, I think the Chrome implementation is actually nicer and probably uh, more useful to the user. I think we go for a more minimalistic, very sober uh, message that the application will install, you know, with uh, Windows features. But it's it's definitely something that we're always looking into, you know, experimenting, how can we improve it? So uh, in this case, I think we should have more information and, uh, you know, might be the case that in the future. Nice. I do like the pictures. I feel like they, yeah. they bring a lot to the table. It kind of makes it feel a little more official. It feels like an app store kind of experience. You're like, wow, they really are transitioning me, uh, which is nice. And considering that you have so much useful information to manifest, then why not surface that? In yeah. a way? You know, you're, you're going to install it. And unless it's unless it's uh, one of those applications that, that you kind of get like a site as an app, then the info is there. Just kind of 
get it in 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 the um, Indian style. Program. Yeah, it's just a different approach, right? Yeah. Like, okay, one may be more direct, one is more nuanced, and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Well, let's see here. Okay, well then I'm gonna take you a different direction. I'm still gonna uh, put you in a pseudo browser war, though. Oh, hot, friends, hot, yeah. or hot takes. I know. What? Yeah. Not? Yeah. Well, we're all uh, friends here. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, if you share a drink together, come on, right? Exactly. Yeah, you know, we can be a little little honest. I mean, we're all chromium folks here. Well, yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah. yeah. We, we're that. cut from Coming the same tree. Yeah. yeah. We're farts from the same butt. Mm. Sorry. Did I say that out loud? It's like I fed you drinks before we started this. I was going to say Brave or Arc browser. Arc. Yeah? What is it you like about Arc? So... I like the fact that they are implementing mica type of effects on Windows 11. I think that's uh, really, really cool. And I like the I like that they're being bold with how they can present, kind of reimagine what browse what browsing can be. I wish they were a bit more supportive of like independent applications, PWAs, but if I have to choose between Brave, which I think is a perfectly decent, nice browser, and Arc, I think Arc has, I think they're kind of cool. They're kind of like the cool kids in the block, at least for now. Yeah, they're cool. And I think they have a different use case. I actually like use all three of those browsers and for different things. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's like Chrome is my driver for certain things and certain reasons and yeah. the signing into different profiles is really useful for me. And then, oh, I'm over in Brave. And I actually end up developing there more, which is interesting. Right. And then Arc is like, and just kind of for me stuff. Like, oh, I'm in Twitter on there and stuff like that. And I'm not calling it the other thing. Fuck that shit. Yeah. By the way. So yeah. the name it shall, shall not be. Yeah. I also use Firefox Focus. Do you all use that or know what that one is? Yeah. I love that one. That's how I open any link. You send me any link. I'm opening it in Firefox Focus. Firefox if I'm shopping, Focus. I'm opening it in Firefox. If I'm searching for something that my body's doing that I don't like, yeah, Firefox Focus. Focus. Yeah, I just like um, the name. I don't even know about this. Oh I'm man, like, it's yeah. incognito always. Yeah, it destroys cookies always. One time and the tab shuts down to shit is toast. Yeah, yeah. And it has the coolest uh, purple logo. It's oh yeah, like this cool mutation of the Firefox logo that Ooh. just looks really really cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Today so I it learned. doesn't really have tabs. It does have tabs because it's not going to really tabs single you into that. Tabs are kind of a bad but... idea. They just cause me to have 45 things open yeah. as like a, a task list. I just like very the, lazy. all of my cookies and all of my session yeah. information and anything my browser doesn't just travel with me everywhere, which means I get way less ads everywhere I go because they don't know shit about me because whenever I'm doing, I'm just an anonymous person. Yep. And I really appreciate the ability to like go to an Etsy web store yeah. and look at like an elf cloak. What? Yeah, like we all do, of course. Uh, and then yes. not have elf cloaks follow me around for months. You know, yeah, it's they, like yeah, there, you've got a reason to anonymize that yeah. that desire. There might there might be that. Uh, okay, you got any more hot? It's for my wife. Yeah, uh, of course. Yes, um, I don't think he cares about TypeScript inferred types. That's, that's true. Um, tailwind or vanilla CSS? Sorry, Ta tail tailwind or vanilla CSS? If you're going to build a PWA. What are you going to pick? Oh, well, the first one, I don't know her. And so vanilla CSS for me. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Tailwind is a way to make people argue on Twitter about the number of class names that you add to an HTML element. That's basically what you need to know about it, unless you were going to dive into the system. Fair. No, I'm, I've always been a vanilla CSS. And I just kind of just enjoy trying out all this new stuff that comes out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like what? No. Well... A big fan, wouldn't say like new, new, but uh, Flexbox Grid. Yeah. The way that it just made centering stuff and just lay content on a web page was just magical. So I'm I'm a convert there. Oh. Why why is centering such a like difficult thing in in <laughs> UI development? You oh, know, man. it's like it, it is made much easier by Flexbox for yeah. sure. But this is the weirdest thing that, like, that for so long had to be basically a big CSS trick. It's unfortunately going to get better and worse soon. So, okay, uh, consider a button that you set display flex and you use even the shorthand here because you're cool. And you know that place items center is going to set align items and justify items at the same time. So you center the text inside of a button, but your designer shows up and they go, it's not in the center. 
And you go, bullshit. I, I told it in the center. And they go, look. And they draw the lines from the top of the button to the top of the capital letter. From the bottom of a letter, not the descender. And they draw that one down. Then they go, it's nine versus eight. And they go, it's not center. That's where I draft my letter of resignation. Mm. I'm not doing that shit again. I've been down that path, but... Yeah, so we're getting that's... we're getting text box trim, which is going to help this. Right. But I mean, it's just like the amount of centering problems mm-hmm. and the centering concept has so many layers. It's like an onion that people hate so much, fighting, but it just keeps fighting getting... the browser's interpretation of things, even if you don't agree with it, is like bike shedding, like just masterful bi- bike shedding. I just don't get it. It's just sort of it like it, it's like over designing the select, you know, right? Like the select component, like. Okay, this is the element. This is what it does on the browser. Why do I have to create a fake one? Because I need a I need a an icon that has the flag next to the country you're choosing. Yeah, well, that is kind of helpful though. Yeah, mm-hmm. Usability for the win. You know, just make make sure that that you can get a, an easy way of uh, of selecting that country. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we want people to be able to interface with something and not think. I call it kind of like transparent UI, where it's just like you approach a trail and there's like a sign in front of the trail. You didn't have to be like, I need to learn a new sign and I need to learn to read so that I can go down this trail. It's like the whole thing is just very natural for you. Just like a, you get in a car too and eventually it becomes very, the dashboard. You don't think about it very much. You just glance at it. I think UIs are best when they're out of your way and you feel empowered as a driver or an, a, like a user or something. Okay. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. And plus, repeating information is always kind of good, right? If you want to... You're trying to select the flag of the Netherlands and the flag of Luxembourg. It's that shade of blue, the one that will confuse you. And uh, the fact that you can have the flag and some text, and it's always nice. So That's true. Yeah. And if you're tra- talking about accessibility, like an icon isn't sufficient for everyone, right? Definitely needs, not. The screen readers need something to read. Yeah, same with color, too. You can't rely on color. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Label everything, y'all. If you're listening, <laughs> always use a label. <laughs> it's almost like there should be a specialized area of application development where they just focus on accessibility it's like maybe maybe that's something we should do yes yeah yeah i agree sarcasm but uh, all righty hot take and or like diving into you know on-brand contextual discussions here and in spite of apple's best efforts what do you think the future of quas Oof. Um, so, look, I, I think that, I think that there's, there's exciting stuff that's coming down the pipeline. At the moment, thinking about democratizing application distribution, making sure that the platform itself can have a mechanism to install another application let's say natively, like the platform natively installing another website is is something that's gonna be quite big. It's something that can that can change the way that we get applications. This whole idea of being able to completely bypass an an, an application store or to enable application stores to actually distribute uh, PWAs or, or web apps is is quite interesting. I think as well, you know, efforts uh, that might be coming into how do we get, you know, the PWAs and websites in general, web applications, to communicate with all this new kind of the buzzword, not buzzword, you know, AI. How can we get all these applications to kind of like advertise, hey, I can do this, you can do this with me. So I think that's uh, kind of like what I, what I would be seeing for the for coming future there's a lot of work as well in in trying to make sure that the applications and whenever a user is installing something that they don't go in like way but this is kind of just a a wrapped web application like you know you, you're putting this on a frame and it still works you know if it smells like a website it, it works as a website then it's just a website it's the uncanny hybrid app kind of vibe yeah yeah so I think there's going to be more work in making sure that we kind of spot all the little details that give the experience away and just continuing the refinement of, of web applications in every platform. I, I'm 
yeah, looking forward to to the progress that we can make with with some of the APIs like web install of, in even outside of Chromium. Like I'm I'm still hopeful that that we're gonna find good partners and and uh, that you know it's gonna be a proven use case. And once it's a proven use case, then it's something that other browser vendors could say like, yeah, you know, this not such a bad idea. It's working. Let's see how we can make it work for us as well. So yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad idea by any means. I think what you mentioned around s circumventing app, app stores is probably where most of the friction lies, right? Like there was a decent desire for that and a pretty good path for a little while before things kind of slowed down and, and you know, some moves were made to make it more and more challenging within other, brow other browsers and ecosystems to a degree. So that that's probably like part of what it is, is yeah. like how can you get there and and, you know, if you're trying to take a chunk out of somebody's wallet, even how, however big that wallet may be, which we know real fucking big, you, they're never going to make it easy for you until, until that maybe is. I, I think everyone can get creative enough to say, hey, these are the new rules of the game. Then how can we monetize based on the new rules of the game? So, yeah, I'm still keeping my hopes high. So Windows did a really good job bringing PWAs into their app store. And I was super stoked. I thought that was a great idea. And then I didn't see a lot of commitment from engineers. And I'm curious, what do you think the barriers to entry were for that sort of thing? Because really, the, there was no barrier other than potentially signing up through the Microsoft Developer Network and sort of submitting yourself as a owner of a URL. Yeah. I don't know. What was the... So so I, I think I see it in a, in a different light. Um, probably... The biggest applications that we're distributing through the Microsoft Store are all PWAs. If you think about like Instagram, Touché. Facebook, yeah. TikTok. Not really sure if I can be saying the names. It's the App Store. Basically, like the biggest. The you biggest, can on ours. I don't know about you. Yeah, you know, I have your no stuff. Idea. But. I have no idea. But, but basically, like the biggest. Don't worry, names, we have one listener. It's totally fine. Biggest like names, me. biggest applications that are being distributed by the Microsoft Store are all PWAs. And we where you know there's i think there's there's an added signal of trust when you're going to like an app store curation is yeah. trust yeah. so we're we're we've been looking at stuff like for for a while you would implement window controls overlay you would get on a pwa and you would get like the chevron you know and the 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 main reason for that chevron to toggle the feature even though the developer uh, implicitly turn the feature on in its manifest file is just to kind of tell the user, you know, hey, you've, you've installed this from the browser. Um, if this application is, try is trying to create or an, uh, let's say a user interface that might look something similar to that of your bank or that of et cetera, et cetera, then you still have uh, the origin that appears and disappears. You still have like the application name, but if that were turned on by default, then you kind of don't get the name of the application and, and kind of like the title bar itself. We, we're trying now and, and testing being able to, for example, hide that Chevron. If it's the same yeah. the same PWA, we just hide the Chevron because you're getting it from the, from the Microsoft Store. So I think you it's tapped a, the tile, right? You're exactly. like, I don't, I don't need the reminder. Yeah. yeah I like it, all the title bar updates to PWH right now. That's tight. It's removing that sort of visual indicator to users that you're in a browser which exactly it, it it was good and it's nice to escape hatch sometimes like copy url and then send to a friend or whatever but i feel like that's a power user move and i like that you're kind of leaning into this yeah transparent, there's, yeah there's, there's definitely a lot of thought of how can we streamline the title bar because i mean we, we see it in the browser you're navigating like there's a bunch of features that are coming into the browser and just everyone thinks that probably the best idea is to put a new icon in the omni box so then you end up with like, you know, you go to a website and you have like 20 um, new icons, um, all competing for attention. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're we're thinking in, you know, streaming this uh, and make sure that we just have like the best UX for, for for PWAs. But I think that's, for example, a good way of refining and taking PWAs a bit further. You're getting a PWA from the Microsoft Store, then at least if it's Windows Controls Overlay, you won't get the Chevron, and it's going to be on by default. That's what the developer intended. Uh, you've gone through, let's say, a, a signal of trust by downloading it from the store. So there you go. It's a strong Microsoft play to be the center for PWAs, to be the trusting 
um, aggregator that users know. Because um, I'm kind of surprised at this point that there aren't more sites scraping for manifest.json, aggregating those things and absorbing their icons and presenting them. And I think there are stores like that where you can go browse PWAs um, in what feel like a web store. But Microsoft's sort of pioneering this, like, it's built into the OS. We're integrating it very seamlessly with the rest of the applications, and the user doesn't need to know. I don't think most users care. Yeah, how you got there. That's like trying to tell a user, was this written in Ruby or was this written? Yeah, in... yeah it, what's the engine this, in the car? Yeah, like, like, I don't care. Yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, I, I agree. I think more than that, what, what surprises me is that there's still a lot of developers that are not really sure what a PWA is. What um, is one? What is a PWA? PWA, uh, the way... I mean, Pois. Pois. Wow, There's pois. A pois. yeah, you want to get political now. This is where we're going. Is well, yes, it's, prog yes, it's progressive, right? I mean, somehow I was yeah. not it, and then I eventually became it. It, it, it progressively it, it did it. I don't know. Yeah, basically, I think it makes sense if you already have a very good web application that's running on your tab. It's just kind of like the natural evolution of, of that, you know, making sure that your web application will have a good way of being accessed either through the start menu or the home screen in Android or or the dock on on um, Wait, Android, is that the shit that sends me green bubbles? Right, it's a, it's yeah. a thing here, right, in the States. Fucking it's green a, bubbles. It's a thing here in the States. What, you mean outside of the States, all bubbles are blue? Dude, like I was, look. Or no, it's just WhatsApp and, and you got other apps. No offense, but I was, like, when I was flying here, the plane was full of um, people from the United States of America. Oh, and I Yankees. Was like, we like freedom. Yeah, and I was like, why is everyone wearing an Apple Watch? Like, what is wrong here? Like, what is... And I was like, wow, it's... Yeah, you can take it off now, but... <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's... it's. I think it's a different market share and a different market situation, like, back in Europe. Um, but, yeah, Android, like, you know, it's a... It's a... Yeah. I, I think Europe is a bit more... Pra like, we want shiny new all the time. Chasing shiny new, shiny new, shiny new, even to our disadvantage. Sounds I like think the it's JavaScript like a cultural ecosystem. thing. Exactly. No, it is a very much of that. We're always like, we want what everyone else has, what someone else has, and then that starts to grow. And then they'll, what? You don't have that? You don't know about like what's your current heart rate? And the I want to. I got the platinum one. Yeah, fool. exactly. Yeah. I have the Hermes one. And. We're uh, we're both using Fitness Plus, so we can you know we can I have compete. Plus plus, yeah. so you need to we go can home. Compete against one another. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's crazy to, to yeah, say. Yeah, look, that. I, w I was, I had a smartwatch. I was a big fan of smartwatches. I'm now back to basics, tech detox. But I remember, like, I was really excited when I was running a a Samsung Galaxy watch. Yeah, and one of the things that made me really really happy was when I was testing my PWA. Of course, like the Galaxy Watch did not run PWAs, but it did have the, the Samsung internet on, on the thing. And I remember going and just browsing on the watch and, it, and it's, yeah, it made me happy. I don't know why. No. Uh, I don't know. It's engineered to like fire off yeah. particular synapses and do just because, all these crazy Just because things. you can doesn't mean you should, right? Yeah. But, I kind of agree with that. It's funny that, you know, you make that that comment around an Apple Watch, which I do have and have on, but I have been thinking lately. I don't know. I've been rethinking all kinds of things in Dude, my get life. Dude, it's like, $15 no, no. for five years of battery life. No, I'm aware. I, you know, I remember those calculator watches back Dude, they're in the day, still bro. rad, man. Uh, they're vintage. They're like, right. now it's cool. That's the thing. Well, I have like, a couple of vintage watches. They're not like Rolexes or some bullshit like that, but I have some cool like 70s watches that I used to, to you know, pay to fix and keep going and this kinetic has no battery, so you just do this and it makes it go. Oh, and yeah. I've actually thought yeah. about stepping back to that. It was like, how much of this information do I need to know? It's and like I'm my TV, I want a dumb TV. The smart TVs are pissing me off. Give yeah, me a dumb and TV. I'm like interrupted. Yeah. And it's like, how much of this yeah. information do I yeah, need? Yeah. I already have a mini computer in my pocket. Like, yeah. I think I was, was last year I was in, in Barcelona. I forgot to take my Not Barcelona? Charger. Not Barcelona? No, Barcelona. Oh, lovely yeah. there. Yeah. Catalan, yeah. that is a great yeah. place. Yeah. No, in, in, in Catalan, they don't... they. They don't say that. They don't, yeah, yeah they yeah, don't pronounce the... Castilian does that yeah. this, and then the Catalans do the... But no, I was there. I forgot my, my watch charger. I had a, a, you know, dead, dead watch for two weeks. So stupid when you're wearing a black mirror that can't do yeah. shit. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So that's when I came back to London, and I was like, no, I'm going back to, you know, a normal watch. Because also, 
I'm not even sure why I'm talking about like the the economics of this, but it well, was like cares? you know I can it's come I to can, your mind. It's the whatnot. This is it's it. gonna be. I I went. I kind of like like the idea of having uh, the payment stuff just for the tube. Yeah, it just makes it convenient. That was kind of nice. And then I found that there's a couple of brands that do passive NFC chips on the watch, and you can just go to the tube, pay, and it you know it's a normal watch. Yeah, so, for yeah. the plebes out there, that's the London Underground. I know yeah. that just because yeah. I've been yeah. to the UK Sorry, a yeah. bunch and stuff. So I want an e-ink watch. That's, oh, that's, yes. I, I, I want so an e-ink phone. I want, I want, an e-ink I want phone. it really thin, Dude. and I want it to last a long time. I don't care about text messages. Just give me the fucking yeah. time and yeah. like the date and some other basic yeah. shit and stay alive like for three months. Yeah. Sony used to have a prototype of a watch that was all white. Privilege. And then <laughs> you would like, it, it would like, like change colors and well, like not you. colors. It would just kind of like be like black and then like get a pattern and it would be really, really cool. Sick. I think it never, never made it out of like prototype, but like e ink. I, I love my Pebble. With Dude, the Pebble was amazing. I had a Pebble yeah. one. I wrote apps for Pebble because it was, they had a JavaScript SDK. I made an, a weather app called MFN Weather, which was short for motherfucking weather because it, it would no, tell we you the that. weather in the most crass, stupid ass way. It's yeah. like my youthful sucks, brain. bro. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's really fun. I loved, I loved how hackable it was. This shit lasted forever. It was a week on a battery. Um, and so when I traveled, I didn't have to bring a charger. I'm s- I hate the slavery I yeah. feel to my watch. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I've got this whole like folio of cords and stuff for travel yeah, for man. like everybody's this shit. This is making me yeah. want to take this thing off. I've already been like, yeah. I'm, so this is my second it. time coming back because I do love my Casio. No joke, dude. It's like you shower in it. It's just uh, you beat it up. It's 15 bucks. You shower? No. I don't so. think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was not only the watch, but. I bought as well, like these glasses that have like use the Bose frames. And I was like, every single night I would come back and I would have to charge glasses, watch, phone, tablet, e-reader. It's like, what are you I, doing, Diego? Yeah. What are you doing with your life? This yeah. is, this is not what you should you're be doing. Tech, but healthy you're in reflection yeah, is what you're, you're doing. In tech, yeah. but you don't have to be physically yeah. represented by yeah. tech all yeah. along. Yeah. And, and, and then, you know, I, I just. I just went obsessed with the whole, you know, nice watch, something yeah. simple. Yeah, NATO band. That's all like, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's like, I, I did. You were going to say something about e ink. Uh, no, but the Sony watch. I think I was going to say something about the pricing. Because oh. then I, I was thinking if you get one of these smart watches, they're, let's say, 300 quid, 250 quid. Nice. If you get like, like this watch I'm wearing is, I think it's like 350 quid, but mm-hmm. this one will not be you know outdated in two years yeah no it's so good like, you could ha- wear that watch the next 20 years it can be an heirloom piece there's all exactly. this like stuff like this is like oh there's really already two stuff. versions you drive this, this off one. the lot and it lost I, its I value know, it just is definitely like that and then yeah. they like come out with the shit like left and right so hold on dear listener i just want to give you a heads up so quid is the slang term for pounds in the british England. Pound. yes the great british it's pound. much like the dollar is to bucks. the bucks right yeah exactly bucks. yeah yeah so just nuances here and there for our one listener I was yeah like, i can't afford to lose this person you educated me, i'm thinking. on the i'm on the edge so you're in london you've obviously assimilated some i'm gonna make a guess are you an arsenal fan uh, no okay no i F- football though or no 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 okay. not, not much football I, as long yeah. as it's not like arsenal chelsea then no i can no, no. with it yeah I did get my British citizenship recently, so that's kind of like milestone. How do you do that? I would love to do that. Yeah, that's rad. Uh, you need to pretty much just be... probably. Well, six years in the UK. Six years in the UK gets you a permanent residence. One more year gets you uh, citizenship. So Excellent. I've been... Uh, whenever people ask me, how long have you been in London? It's too long. Yeah. But... We'll swap. How do you like uh, the desert in Phoenix? Oh, I love it. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Let's Let's make a talk. My kid. Well, we're gonna move to Italy next year, but okay. my kids are like, "We can't we go somewhere where they speak English like predominantly?" And I was like, "Not really. They don't want us there because you like, know, don't worry we're about it, kids. You'll figure it out. Else. Yeah. yeah, and they will. Like, yeah, they'll, they'll learn Italian. They'll, they'll be, be so happy. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. be yeah. you know, Allora. win 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 yeah. win win. Yeah, that's what I think. Like a little more worldview. Get a exactly. little challenge. Get bilingual. Vini yeah, Vidi Vici or whatever. Uh, Vidi Vidi Vici. That one. Yeah. 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 Wasn't that a Strokes album or somebody's album? I don't know, Vidi Vidi it's Vici. like on all sorts of but anyway, castles. Allora, that's yeah. my yeah. favorite Italian word. And then my name in England means to throw shit away. So, Chuck, 
Yeah, Chuck. Oh, is, Charles. Oh, I was like, Charles wait, means that I am oh, such okay. a dignitary yeah. and all of that, but like my actual name that people call me, Chuck, is like, oh, chuck it in the it bin. Out. Yeah. yeah, chuck it out in the bin. Hit command, delete. Yeah, you know, yes. put it in the bin. Yeah, that's what most people do. Not to me, jerks. Anyway, I I love European culture and I watch a lot of football and proper football, and so I always yeah. have to ask those questions, but. You know, it's not for everyone. Sport. Yeah. Sport. What do you got for hobbies? If you're not watching football, what are you what are you up to? Photography. Ooh, rad. So you got an eye for a lens. All right. Tell me about the lenses you're looking through. Well, it depends on. I like to plan like trips, based on the type of stuff I'm gonna do. I think probably one of the coolest ones I've done was uh, Norway. Is uh, trying to get to the Northern Lights. Did not see them recently. The Northern Lights. No, I wish, dude. I was. So, just, a, just a few weeks ago. Yeah, I know. All of incredible. Like, you, I, I think here in Seattle as well, right? Yes, like, here in yeah. Seattle as well, could yeah. see them, at least with the camera. I was in Dublin, and it was it was visible from Dublin. All I, Ireland was freaking out, and I was yeah. so happy I was there. Yeah. I, I was in Abu Dhabi. Like, the only Ooh. the only weekend that I go out of Damn. London, like, it's 25 degrees, like, amazing weather, and you get northern lights, and it's like, see, this is, this is why I shouldn't leave the country. Right, right. But yeah. you wanted to go eat gold. That's what I did in Abu Dhabi. I don't know about you. Eat gold? Yeah, you can eat gold. So there's... Um, Not gold oh, flakes? I, yeah, I've, I've heard about it. Yeah, yeah there's it. that yeah. cafe in the big Do you palace process hotel. gold in your belly? Yeah, but it's it's like gold foil, right? Like, makes so really cool thin. poop if it came out. And gilded. you never had gold schlager in college? You never had gold schlager in college? That had, well, like, yeah, but dude, that, that doesn't feel like... No, I had a you cappuccino know that, a... that had like gold flex, and my wife had this like pastry that had like this really cool like um, gold foil... like thing on there yeah, yeah you edible gold it. completely edible, edible. Gold. Ed- edible as you do gold. yeah as, as you, you do, do. Sure. you could I go mean, to a vending machine fancy. and buy a gold yep. bar and other stuff they should too. do that at more fancy Abu Dhabi is beautiful yeah. by the way it was like in- incredible i got right? some amazing shots yeah yeah I, I like bet. i got some amazing shots there um, so video or photos photos okay i haven't gotten into video i kind of want to do the jump but, um it's trickier it's it's a lot more it's a lot more data you got to stick on a card oh yeah that too yeah that's very interesting. Anywhere else interesting that you've traveled for uh, photo well, purposes? Well, I mean, I guess to, to answer your question about like lenses, you know, oh, I have yeah. a, a 500, uh, sorry, a 150 mil to a 600, which is the one that I do for bird photography. Oh. So last time I used it was uh, Costa Rica um, when hunting for, to, not hunting, not, not hunting, hunting, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, when yeah, uh, yeah. looking for. You're still intense. shooting things. You're, yeah, you're still shooting, but they get to you know, walk yeah, away from it. Yeah, I, I let them, yeah, but. Toucans and Quetzales. So uh, this is why you love Fruit Loops. This is why it all kind of comes around. Full I know. Circle. See, yeah. yeah, that was off air, by the way. So Diego is in the UK, where they don't have garbage food such as Fruit Loops or and, Mountain Dew. Yeah, or Mountain yeah. Dew. I mean, Mountain Dew. Come on, what does that taste it's like? The nectar Neither of Mountain the gods, nor Dew. I mean, well, that's it's what... how you stay up late p- playing like first person shooter games, and that's about it. You know, you drink a gallon of that to like. Because you are in high school chugging some crap vodka, and then Mountain Dew makes that taste go away and introduces something else gross and artificial. Interesting. That was my high school experience. So. What if you stayed up late playing video games, but instead of Mountain Dew, you're drinking Woodenville? Uh, so I was. FIFA. He's, he's definitely playing FIFA, drinking I, booze, man. I have done that. Not as much as I used to or like to, but I definitely would stay up late like playing FIFA because I would wait till my family goes to bed and then it's me time. So yeah. I yeah. watch a show they yeah, don't want to see sleep, it's or play time. this game, yeah. like, yeah, that kind of thing. I would argue that that still exists in my life to a degree around the, you know, the Balmer effect or the Balmer peak. So it's funny with Microsoft tie in, but there's an XKCD comic that talks about how like there's this balmer peak where like the more you drink the better you get at coding but then you hit that peak and oh I have it's seen straight this, down yeah, and from it's there all down. And it's like good, that... good 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 and it kind of works it absolutely does you have a couple of drinks i wonder and if just... that works for writing specs yeah you get in a flow like oh, right definitely. you, you flow know state. there's some spec authors that were like oh watch me write this paragraph Wait, yeah you see you get you get down, you get into flow, and you're just like, yeah, and you keep drinking, and you're like, yeah, I'm getting it, and then you're like, I don't know what's happening anymore. Yeah. I, this is it. I'm done. Yeah, I've definitely been through a few. Man, of those I have friends that definitely can drink and code, and I am I can. not. I am not one. I can to a point. Oh man, it ruins I am, me. So I am we're... the textbook definition of that Balmer peak. Like, it'll put me in a flow state, and then I'll crash the fuck out. Oh man, yeah. One of my favorite Aesop Rock quotes is. Cameras are guns. 
when are y'all going to shoot me to death? And it just seems relevant for what you do. You know, looking through a lens, shooting stuff, but you're not you're not shooting it to death, but I don't know, it's just a fun Stabbing play. shit? Like he's in the UK. It's a good he's pun, gonna, you know? If anybody's going to stab, it's the Squirrel Master. Yeah, that's a, nope. That's from a movie also. It's a little pop culture you reference. Would be. For, but yeah, it's from Half-Baked. Actually, I think that is. Oh, dang. Goes that's... to jail and like Tommy Chong is there and he's the squirrel master and he protects, what's his name? Harlan Williams? Anyway. Yeah. Okay. An actor. Yeah, look it up. Half-Baked. It's really funny. Half-Baked. We'll, yeah. we'll do it's yeah. like one it's of those a... movies everyone's like, Adam, you love that movie, right? I'm like, no, Why do you sucks. think that? Yeah, what do you think about me? You don't think it's funny? I, I, I'm not a fan of most I mean, stoner movies. Amazing. Gra- Grandma's Boy was the only stoner movie that's, where I was like, I that's was a dumb. great movie. I thought that was dumb. See, there you go. I don't usually yeah. like stupid humor, but I did think Half-Baked, like Half-Baked was, was good. good. Yeah. He's like, I haven't seen both. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Out of context. Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, we, we uh, you know, you have a long flight back. Maybe you check it out. Half-Baked or not. I'm pretty sure they're on the plane. Half-Baked on a plane. Yeah. Hey, have you ever seen a $20 bill? you ever seen a $20 bill on, on weed? weed? See, you say it's a bad uh, movie. Well, but that's the I only, mean, it's that, corny that one's parts, quotable. Yeah. There's so many famous comedians in this, too. It so. is stacked with cameos, yeah. Yeah, so Dave Chappelle's in it. He's like the main character, Dave Chappelle. It's like the quintessential peak stoner movie. I mean, it's just smoking weed from the start to the end of the movie. You're watching Fools be Fools. You're watching Slangers Slang. It's the whole thing, and you're just watching a bunch of turds be turds, and it's pretty funny. Hey, I guess it is. You know what? I See, should probably give it a rewatch. Said it. It's, it's pretty funny. It's been a minute. It's like okay, I saw Napoleon Dynamite in the theater. Yeah, I no joke, walked out. Wow, that's a walkout. I walked out because I was like, this movie sucks. It's really slow. It, it dry is as slow. hell. And then it's full of quotables. But the thing though, was, is come back to we're it. driving away from the theater, and we start talking about it. We start laughing our ass off in the car. Just, just like remembering the, I was like, that movie sucks so bad. Do you see that time when you did that thing? And we're all like, <laughs> yeah. And we're like, holy shit, the movie is actually kind of good. It became sticky. It became sticky. It so we so had to watch like... it. I went back, watched it again. I was like, damn it, I was wrong. So this the Brits good. have all the dry humor, though. And I love really dry humor, like all the way back to like Monty Python stuff and original office, all of that. Mm. So I agree. Yeah. Y'all do pioneer stuff that we steal and we don't give you cred. It sucks. I mean, uh, they, they do. I'm just a, you know, yeah. imported. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say, he's not like OG, like back in the day or anything else, but. Word. And I think Ricky Gervais is doing fine. You really shouldn't feel sorry for him. They that didn't, guy I don't they like didn't steal like. it. They paid him a lot of money. Really? I loved him at the Oscars where he's just like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm drinking a beer. I'm shitting on all of you because I don't fucking care anymore. I'm too rich. I don't care. It's a South Park thing to do. I like it. Yeah. I guess maybe, so I, you do maybe like I do it. like him. I don't know. It's you. He's so, so the, over the top. Here is, like, here's what it is about Adam is that he is not steadfast in his opinions. Apparently. Loosely you know, like, held. Loosely, loosely held. Nothing. Thoughts and yeah. opinions around things. Well, we've gone well down whatnots. Yeah. Well, let's Pivot. bring it back around, bro. Here you go. Close out the show appropriately. No way. I cannot. You could. You must. All right. So, as we're wrapping up here, I want to bring it back to you. I want to thank you for being on the show. Is there anything else you want to talk about, plug, tell people to take a look at, where they can find you on the internet, whatever? Well, I think if I had a message, then it would be... Dude, I'm I'm thinking so many things that, like, it could be such a life-changing message. But probably it's just going to be like, update your manifest files. Make sure that With they... what? With what though? Let's get into the deets. Yeah. Look, be we'll specific. Talk. We want my manif- I have a manifest. What yeah. should I update, man? What's, what needs to go in it? You should be putting display overrides. Your window controls overlay to make sure that, you know, that you get all the, the viewport real estate that you can. Yeah. Okay. So tell people what you mean. Um, the title bar is generally con- consuming so the, 10 to 15 pixels, so the title and you bar, might want a windowless kind of experience, yeah? Or a, yeah, you, you want you want that or cool board, borderless, Spotify, yeah. Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word and cool? Oh, Did you word, say that cool and Microsoft Word? You know, sponsored by... Okay. Yeah, Google. Word is timeless. I'm, I mean, I'm it, just saying, I'm just saying, like, you know, like the Spotify, like, like the type of Visual Studio Code. I'm thinking about cool apps. Yeah. The, you want to expand your viewport. You want to make sure that even if it's just, you know, add a gradient on that that title bar. 
Uh, yeah. And display overrides have a fallback strategy too, yeah. right? Yeah. They do have a, like a, a graceful strategy. degradation exactly. in, in a progressive web app. So I'm progressively gracefully degrading. Yes. But also like if you if you if you're doing a PWAs, just you want to make sure that you have if you if protocol handling is important to you, then just go ahead and make your PWA. Don't be afraid. It won't bite. But file handling. Make sure that your manifest is up to date because then we can take advantage as well of, for example, if you want to put screenshots on, yeah. Yeah, the screenshots. How do I make sure that my PWA intercepts URLs before they hit a browser and I want them to open up the PWA? Someone's just clicking a link and I happen to register myself as a handler of that. Well, so what the, about search the also? URL... Does Windows do search handling of a PWA? Can I search in too deep a PWA? Sorry, I'm like, can you so search into... Into... Yeah, you're not doing a good job. Where were all these fucking questions earlier? Well, I got some in the hopper. Okay. Yeah. Well, we always want to leave you with something to like, here's why you should come back. Yeah, true. So there's that too. True, true. So I guess I can answer those questions in a yeah. year when I come back for the next Woodenville Whiskey in Seattle. Yeah. 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 That sounds great. Well, thank you again. Yeah. Update your manifest files. That's, Update that's the your manifest. Yeah. Um, maybe it's a little while. Yeah. yeah. Pua. That's what I want to leave you with here is pua. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. If you liked it, please subscribe or, and or leave a review. Boop, 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 You've been watching Whiskey Web and Whatnot, recorded in front of a live studio audience. What the fuck are you talking about, Chuck? Enjoyed the show? Subscribe. You know people don't pay attention to these, right? Head to whiskey.fun for merch and to join our Discord server. I'm serious. It's like 2% of people who actually click these links. And don't forget to leave us a five-star review and tell your friends about the show. All right, dude, I'm out of here. Still got it. Don't do that, I'm not here.